Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Just after 12 noon New York time on Tuesday, October 10th, 2023. And uh, this is Forex Brizio uh, checking in. And this is uh, <clears throat> will be a brief video here, guys. Uh, this is basically uh, part three of uh, a video I made last week on, I think it's called my favorite future setup. You can go back on the channel. It's probably like two videos ago because I know I made one in between and now I'm making this one from the last two days and so I'm not going to rehash all that but um, basically I just want to point out two trades uh, one that I just closed actually a few minutes ago that could potentially go higher but um, I, I'm happy with it for right now and so uh, essentially guys what I said in that video is that I was looking for going into the New York Open uh, for the uh, NASDAQ. You can do this on NAS, NASDAQ. This is, happens to be the NASDAQ futures. You can do it on the S&P, Dow, Russell. Uh, you know, really, I guess you could do it on any market. But in terms of these financials, uh, I just like the NASDAQ. It, it, it's a little bit more bang for the buck for the points it produces. And so um, basically what I like to do is I'm looking for a range going into the New York Open, okay, which um, that's 9.30 a.m., and again, I generally don't trade that first half hour or so. I'll kind of let the market do its thing. But I'm looking for a range that oftentimes extends back to yesterday's price action into the afternoon. Because generally after 12 noon, 2 p.m. or so New York time, generally the market will start to kind of quiet down for the day and start moving sideways. Not always. Sometimes if it's a big news catalyst or something that came out, then you could get a, you know, the market trending right into the close. But for the most part, the later in the afternoon it gets as you head towards the close, um, things will kind of slow down. So I like to go into the next day looking at the price action from the previous mm -hmm. afternoon up to and including the overnight session and the pre-market session leading up to the 9.30 open. And uh, that's essentially what you see here in these two uh, areas here where I have these yellow horizontal lines drawn in right here and then this one from today and so um, yeah, and you can see the two trades that I took so this was yesterday which was Monday and you can see let me just grab my cross here the time here so this was the New York open right here this big blue candle mm -hmm. and you can see what happened was you know price came down <clears throat> just before the open spiked through okay and this is the New York opens. You can see down at the bottom it says 1330. On my broker, that's 930 New York time. So you can see we had this false breakout right at the open. Okay, on this is a 10-minute chart. Price went down, all right, tried to, you know, sucked in some people maybe to go short. People figured break out out of this zone. And then you can see it quickly reversed and sold back to the top of the range and very impulsively. Now, I took this trade a little bit early. I know I said I don't usually trade inside of 10 minutes, uh, the first 30 minutes, but when I saw this impulsive move of this thing buy it back up, I just jumped in straight away. Now, obviously, I could have gotten even better, Phil, if I had waited for it to retrace back to the bottom of the range again, but irregardless, I just got in at that point, and you can see I exited later in the day. This was, let's see what time this was at, 2,200 hours, so that's two hours before the close, so right into the afternoon. You can see how price kind of just started moving sideways after that. Okay, so this was a really nice trade yesterday. This was about, um, uh, I don't know, 10% 10, 10 gain in my account just on this one trade in and out within, you know, about four or five hours. And then today, we went into today with, again, highlighting the, the range from yesterday. So this, obviously, this bottom line, this low was put in during the afternoon session. Actually, while I was still in that trade yesterday, but it was the afternoon session. We hit that low again in the pre-market hours, and then um, this was the uh, the high during that range was right here, and then you know it, it, you can see it hit this range three times. So this was the range I drew out going into today's session. It was pretty obvious, and then we went in and we opened. Again, let me get my cross here. So <clears throat> this right here was the open. This little red indecision candle was the open. 
And you can see we just chopped around for the first, again, the first half hour or so. These are 30, uh, 10 minute candles. So this represented the first half hour. And as soon as we hit 30 minutes and I saw this big bullish candle, um, that's when I grabbed the long and I just actually just closed it a few minutes just before I started this video for again another 10% on my account. So, uh, so why I mentioned that this one could go higher is we zoom out a little bit. Uh, you can see here, uh, let me just take that out. You can see right here, uh, just looking left, that we've come into this range right here, okay, where we, you know, kind of potentially have an area uh, of supply coming into here. So that's part of the reason why I exited it, okay. And if it, you know, if it, if it gets through that area, you know, the next little area is sitting right on top of it right here. So theoretically, it could go a little bit higher. Uh, if for some reason it breaks out of this, because this whole area right in here, this is the hourly chart, could just be what I call a retail area, value area. And we could definitely see price break right above all of this and keep going. And if it did, then this would be my next target. We'd be back up over here. Okay, back up into this zone or maybe to maybe right in here, which is about double, you know, what today's uh, motion has been so far. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. It's just that it's the time of day. I, you know, I start to get a little uh, antsy about continuing trades like this, uh, you know, when we're already past noontime. Because really, over the next two hours, you probably will see things quiet down. But, again, you know, this area right through here is kind of like, you know, if, if we break above this area, this would be the next zone. Now, if it doesn't do anything today, let's say it pushes maybe a little higher up into this second box or just stays somewhere in here, the rest of that's fine. I'm actually okay with that. And then tomorrow, I'll be looking for price to be ranging from this afternoon somewhere inside of here. And if I, let's say that happens and let's say I get an upside breakout and I'm comfortable with, then I would take that trade tomorrow all the way back up to here which, you know, on the hourly chart would be the next kind of resistance or supply area or whatever you want to call it. Right in here, maybe price has not been back to this area and we had this big fall away from right in here. Um, that would be a kind of a conservative target. You know, a little bit more aggressive target would be just a little further up back to these highs on the hourly chart. And you can see that also looks pretty good on the four hour chart too. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm out of this trade for today, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, we could go a little bit higher today, but I think we be, could be hard-pressed to get above these, these highs today. But this could be another opportunity potentially into tomorrow. And so I'm not going to give back what I already made today, uh, and I'll probably just stay pat with this for today. But uh, anyways, guys, just wanted to kind of you know highlight these two areas. Uh, I haven't looked at the the ES, so yeah, I mean the this is the S and P, which is exactly the same. I didn't trade this, like I said, I prefer the Nasdaq just because it's it's more bang for the buck for every contract you take. But if you're an S and P trader, there it is. We had the exact same setup. This was yesterday. This was today. Um, I don't have the Russell 2000 on here. Uh, but I bet you if you brought up the Russell or the Dow futures, probably would look the same or very close. Um, but like I said, I just stick to the S&P and the NASDAQ. So so uh, anyways, guys, and then as far as um, the other one thing I trade sometimes is natural gas. So I'll just show you this chart. Um, <clears throat> I did take a break-even trade uh, on this today on this breakout Um and I, I kind of second guess myself, and I probably should have just thought. I mean, I broke even, so it was no big deal. But I was watching this area going into today. Again, this is a 10-minute chart of the natural gas futures. And uh, fundamentally, natural gas is pretty solid right now, but it's had a big run up the last 10 days, two weeks. Um, and so, and if you zoom out a little bit, you can see this area on the three. This is the three-hour chart. You can see we're up to these highs, and price is definitely having a hard time going any higher. It's not to say it won't. I think, again, fundamentally, I think, you know, going into the colder weather and with supply issues and now with what's going on in the Middle East, I think that 
even though this is not oil, I think oil will be more directly impacted, but um, I think fundamentally natural gas is still set to go higher. But technically speaking, it's at an area right now where it's going to have to really struggle to get through here. So going into today's session, you can see the bottom edge of that blue box right here. You know, this is a, acting as very major resistance. And so we broke out for a very short time. Uh, it went long, I think, like right here. I closed it when I got back here for pretty much break even because I didn't like what it was doing. And as you can see, it came all the way back to the bottom of the range. And now it's shot back up and now it's just moving sideways. So I'm obviously not trading this today. There's really nothing going on. Price is just consolidating. So I will continue to just kind of extend these lines, you know, this way. Uh, maybe I actually move this up to the for the top of the range. So now the, our range is a little wider, which I don't, it's not ideal, but it's fine. And uh, we just keep an eye on this range um, going into tomorrow. I know, again, um, this is probably not going to do anything today. This market closes uh, a lot earlier than the uh, financials do. So this is an energy market. So this is pretty much not going to do anything the rest of today. But you can see we just, you know, Temporarily poked our, you know, poked our head out of the range and then came right back in and went back down to the bottom. So look, if you were scalping this on like a five minute time frame, one minute time frame, sure. You could have played the range from the top to the bottom, but I don't play ranges. I, I like to play the breakouts and get a nice little trend going for the day. And that's what I do. I did take this trade, uh, on, uh, yesterday. Uh, I forget exactly where I got in, but, this was a box I had drawn yesterday. Uh, this actually encapsulates um, basically a, a one hour zone down here, you know, where price kind of consolidated the last time. And the, But this did act as a nice breakout, and uh, I did take part of this trade. Actually, this wasn't yesterday. This was, I think it was Friday. Let's see here. What's the date here? 10-6. Yeah, this was, this was Friday, but I did take this trade on Friday. Uh, yesterday I did not trade because we didn't really have a good zone. I think this was yesterday right here. And although it did end up going up, I just didn't like this range, so I just didn't trade it. But I did take this one because I like to see these kind of long, kind of drawn out, choppy zones that form over like a 24 hour period. That's what I prefer to look at versus something like this, which is just very short term. Um, and I usually will just skip that, although it would have turned out to be a decent trade though. So, um, but anyways, guys, just wanted to show you that, and uh, it's just, the, like I said, it's another example, uh, you know, going back to uh, NASDAQ, again, and, or S&P could have done either, that these were good setups. So, uh, the key takeaway, guys, is that A, this is what I'm looking for, these kind of extended sideways movements, looking at like a 10 to 15 minute price chart. Uh, that goes back to the previous day where that consolidation range actually starts. You're not going to get these every day. There's going to be some days you're going to go into the session where price is trending, has been trending since the overnight or the pre-market hours, and it's already trending. Those are days you're not going to find a good range. You know, you'll see, you know, you'd have to end up drawing these yellow lines, you know, more like, you know, at an angle like this because price is already trending and, uh, and those are days I will just skip it um, because, you know, I just won't bother trading those days. And these happen often enough. You can see we got two days in a row here. I'm not saying you'll get two days in a row all the time, um, but we happen to get two, two solid days in a row on both of these. So that was really good. And just be wary of the fake outs like this one especially. Um, and, you know, try to bring some fundamentals in there. I mean, you know, the market is still pretty bullish and the dollar is still fairly bullish right now and so uh, you know it, it, that's what's driving the US stocks <clears throat> and dollars are still kind of a safe haven right now so things are continuing to move up but uh, you know but again we're you know we're heading into these zones like this where there could be some issues of price reversing so I certainly would be on the lookout for that but again if we get through this all this mess right in here which this could just be a, a retail consolidation area, as I mentioned. Then my next target, if we, you know, got a setup like something moving sideways through here, and we get a breakout, then this is an easy target back up to, up to this area up here. So, somewhere, you know, inside this box or to the edge of this this box up here. So, all right, guys, I'll leave it there. Questions, comments, please leave them below, and uh, smash that like button, and hit that. Uh, 
subscribe button if you're just finding the channel. And uh, like I said, any questions, comments, leave them below. And I'll talk to everybody soon.